Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Hooks and Ladders, where we talk about songwriting. Uh, sometimes we have special guests. We do today. But in the meantime, I'm Blair Packham. I'm Alistair Bradley. And our special guest today is Rehan Dalal, who uh, is a fantastic songwriter. Um, uh, he's, he's a recording artist, of course, um, and he uh, has released some great records over the years. He's, he's actually been at this for quite a while. How, how long have you been writing songs and performing? Um, writing songs, probably like 15, 16 years, and I think performing probably like, uh, 14-ish. So quite soon after. So quite a while yeah. after yeah. I... Yeah. Uh, since you, I started when we did this a, whole journey. When we did a show together fairly recently, I, um, I observed to you that um, your voice, to me, reminded me of you know some great singers from the past, but specifically Sam Cooke. Um, and uh, you seem to like that idea, uh, you know, as who wouldn't, because Sam Cooke. Like, I'll take it. You know. Sam Cooke, one yeah. of the best singers of all time. Yeah. Uh, I definitely don't yeah. sound like that, though. <laughs> well, I, I think your voice is really great, your, and your songs, very engaging. So um, your, uh, your earlier career, though, seemed to be more centered on sounding like the people you admire, and so I'm wondering, you've, seen, you've, you've made a departure from that with your recent recordings, and I'm wondering about the tension between wanting to sound like your idols or the people you admire versus finding your own voice, as a songwriter particularly. I think the trick is that you find more obscure people to sound like, and nobody knows, and then... Uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you sound so unique, and it's you don't sound like anyone uh <laughs> but really i just don't sound like anyone you've heard uh but no i i think some of this is just like getting older and getting more comfortable with not sounding like um like other people and being comfortable with the idea that uh i sound a certain way and um learning to work within that framework rather than chasing something else down and i think part of it too was uh my first album i was really going for a certain aesthetic and i really wanted to make a retro soul album and i wanted it to feel like it was from that time period and um so i think some of that just lent itself to sounding like my influences and then um you know once when we got around to doing my new album, I just wanted to do this complete indulgence project. And that really left room for all the sounds I can make with my, my voice kind of happen. Uh, and, and I think it's also just getting comfortable with my voice. I think, uh, just feeling like I know it better now and um how to use it and the things it does well the things it does badly right that yeah that totally makes sense you get to know your limitations but also your uh, your strengths and so forth um i wonder too if it's yeah a comfort in your own you know creative skin um i would think that the uh, well, not that I haven't done it myself. It was just a little, little less conscious, maybe than than you wanting to make a retro soul record. I, I when I first started writing songs, I wanted to sound like you know alternately the Beatles or Elvis Costello or you know a very narrow range of people, the Clash or Squeeze. You know, a very like four different people. That's what I wanted to sound like. But but if you make it even narrower than that, and you say a retro soul record, and therefore it would sound like this handful of artists who work in that genre. I would think that would actually be very comforting as a songwriter. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think, in some ways, it can feel limiting uh, because now you have this this box that you have to write inside of. Um, but yeah, in in other ways, it kind of means now you've got a rule set and uh, it's easy to kind of decide like, hey, this works and this doesn't. Um, and, um, you know, I, I still strayed outside of those lines, um, 
because I think my whole entire life I've fought against the idea of being in boxes and uh, even if I'm the one putting myself in one, I'm like, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there still had to be a few moments that weren't that on the album. and But, um, but yeah, it, it definitely, there's a certain comfort in knowing like what the parameters are for what I'm trying to do and be like, yeah, I have this target I'm trying to get to and how do I get there rather than look at this big empty field. Let me see if there's something out there. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's part of the journey, isn't it? It's part of the journey as the artist. Um, and, and like, like you said earlier, there's a, there's a measure of confidence that comes with every year you add on to, to doing this and growing. Uh, so it's natural to start with, well, okay, I know what works because I've heard it. So I can, I can be there. I can start there. And then as you, as you evolve, you start to discover oh, I've got this that I haven't been using. And I've got this that I haven't been using. Yeah, uh, for sure. And I think like, um, you know, when, at least for me, like, especially with that project, like there was certain, there was certain, um, I'd say like cliches that, that existed in some of those songs, both lyrically um, and musically that, um, that made sense for the idiom of that kind of music. And um, it was a little, in some ways, limiting, but in some ways uh, also kind of difficult because you, I had to now figure out, like, how do I do this without sounding cliche? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, I think that that's somewhat off the balance. I think we all play as songwriters, no matter what we're doing. Like, I think, uh, so much of music has been done before and, um, yeah, you know, finding well, out how to express a cliche idea in novel ways, I think is the whole job. <laughs> it's the whole job. Exactly. It's, it's the familiar versus the fresh, you know, if you're too fresh, you're going to, you're going to not move people, which is our job, you know? And, uh, if you're too familiar, it's cliche and you're going to bore people and you're not going to move them that way. So it's, it's, it's trying to figure out, trying to walk that tightrope basically. Um, yeah, that, that's very good. That's the whole job. I mean, really it's the whole job in a, in a way is, yeah, is this tension between uh, a, a bunch of different things, um, you, you know, uh, the familiar and the fresh, but also the the the, the simple and the complicated, um, you know, the the metaphorical and the real. Uh, there, there's just so many of them, really. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's our challenge. One hundred percent. Do you think some of this perhaps comes from? having such a, a fundamental love of, you know, of an artist from the 60s, from the 70s, from the 80s, you know, some, somebody like Sam Cooke, you look back and you love his catalog and you say to yourself, man, they don't make it like this anymore. <laughs> I mean, sort of. I, I think for me, it's just, I, I will go through periods and be like, I love this music. Uh, it's what I'm listening to right now. And I with all deference to, you know, the people that innovated it and like created it. Like, I just want to like try my hand at it. And, um, and yeah, I think, um, I think for me, like I'm never chasing down a particular artist or, um, trying to 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 like emulate their specific sound always or like yeah try to be 2.0 of somebody else like um i i think for me it's just figuring out like hey i like this thing can i incorporate some of it into what i do in a way that still feels natural and authentic to me and Sometimes that works great, and sometimes it falls real flat on its face, and uh, that's when I figure out what the edges are of what I'm, I'm able to do, and maybe I can push those edges out. But uh, in a given moment, I'm usual. There's usually a very hard edge, and when I reach mm -hmm. it, I know. And um, but yeah, I mean, I think 
part of learning and especially when you're you're self-taught is you kind of chase those that's that's you know you put on the record and you play along with it and that's that was my first introduction to like music education for myself was just like put an album on and I'm just going to play along with it till till it sounds the same. And, um, you know, once I had the resources and tools to kind of learn outside of those environments, I think that helped kind of move away from some of that and express myself um, more true to myself. Right, right. right. Still, your approach sounds very playful uh, and and creative and, and fun. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, well, we have to wrap up, uh, but again, it's been great talking with you. Uh, you're uh, you're a very very creative guy, and uh, it's inspiring to hear your your you know your thoughts and your processes. Even though you, you, you sometimes express a little cynicism here and there, <laughs> I'm which is a <laughs> giant ball of cynicism. <laughs> <laughs> the artist experience. That, yes, I think that. Uh, I think that shows a little bit, but it's okay. It's uh, it's it, that's that's also valuable to us. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. It's so lovely to be here.